Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 4th August 2018. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit or more importantly how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. In today's topics, as usual, we will look at oil and gold using technical charts the commodities that tend to impact related stocks. When swing trading stocks, we like to align the trades with the direction of the market. We will try to understand the market direction using a NASDAQ and NYSE market breadth analysis and technical analysis of the four broad market ETFs. Along with aligning trades with the market's direction, we also prefer to align them with the industry strength. We will study industry strength using scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may go through some of the recent trade ideas shared in our traders forum or the social pages. And as always, try to look for trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. By the way, we will go through the regular topics. And if we have more time, we will go through some of the stocks I have listed in the miscellaneous section. If we don't have enough time, I will stop the recording and then go through these stocks in any case. We start our commodity study using oil. We are looking at oil ETF USO using the weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together we call this at a glance template because this template helps us decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge of the chart in only a few seconds. In the weekly chart, oil is having bearish color, magenta color. This week's candle shape is indecisive, both with solid body and lower tail. In the daily chart, oil is inside a triangle pattern formed by resistance memory and support memory. It is hovering around the yellow direction line until US oil breaks outside the triangle pattern. We are not sure about the instrument's direction and we may not take any swing trade until then. Gold ETF GLD, it is in clear downtrend falling sharply in the weekly chart. In the last market roundup, I discussed that the next support for GLD is around 114.6. If price reverses from there, we may look for a low risk long entry opportunity in gold. That opportunity has not come yet. In the daily chart, it is falling sharply, continuing to wrap around the lower boundary lines. 
too low to try to take any short trade and we don't have any signal for a swing long entry yet. From commodity study, we now move to market breadth analysis. Every week, we study market breadth using NASDAQ Composite Index and NYSE Composite Index, both using weekly charts. Because this study is using broad indices and longer term weekly interval, this should be used more for longer term investment decisions, not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. This week NASDAQ went up. It tried to go below the memory support line but reversed from there. NASDAQ ended with a yellow neutral color candle. The NASDAQ candle shape is bullish. NASDAQ is displaying bearish divergence between the index and the new high low for many weeks now that divergence is continuing nasdaq went up but the new high low couldn't go above this new high low trend line advanced decline went up so did up down volume but both of them closed below zero NYAC went up slightly, the candle color is bullish, candle shape is also bullish. For NYSE, all the three internals went up and closed above zero. In terms of price move, NASDAQ was stronger than NYSE this week. However, when we look at the internals, NYSE is clearly stronger than NASDAQ. Up move of the NASDAQ index was probably driven by the up move of larger stocks like Apple. The internals for NASDAQ are quite bearish. When we combine all the signals from this analysis, we conclude that the indices are in clear uptrend. They will continue to remain in uptrend until these memory support trend lines are broken. Internals for this week are bullish. All the six internals went up and four of them closed above zero. The market breadth is generally bullish. However, there is some concern because of the weak internals in NASDAQ and also because of the divergence between NASDAQ index and the new high low. However, generally the market breadth is bullish. Let's see what we can gather from the market ETF study. S&P 500 ETF SPY in the weekly chart, it is clearly bullish both in color and shape. However, price is close to multiple watermark resistance levels. In the daily chart, it is in uptrend. Thursday gave us a cyan colored candle. However, price was already close to upper boundary lines. Friday, it went further. It is in uptrend but very close to the upper boundary lines. So we may not want to take any swing long trade right now. NASDAQ ETF QQQ. The weekly candle tried to go below the memory support line but reversed from there. The week ended with very bullish shape candle. However, the color is neutral unlike SPY where the color is bullish. In the daily chart, price came to the memory support line, which was also the yellow direction line and went up from there. We had a cyan color candle in Q 
QQQ on Thursday. However, the weekly candle color was yellow. Therefore, we didn't have any go with flow trend following long trade setup. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA. Here, the weekly candle color and shape both are bullish. It is in clear uptrend. In the daily chart, price is very close to the upper boundary lines and also near the watermark resistance level. Therefore, we are not going to look for any long trade right now. Russell 2000 ETF IWM. This is the only broad market ETF where the weekly candle color is bearish magenta. The candle shape is indecisive. It has hollow body, however, also has both upper and lower tails. This is the ETF that is not in an uptrend in the daily chart. It has declining resistance lines at the top and price is supported by yellow direction line at the bottom. Inside a kind of triangle pattern you may say. The weekly candle color is magenta. Therefore next week if IWM goes down and gives us a magenta color candle that will signal a trend following go with flow short trade setup. IWM is clearly the weakest ETF now. We can see the relative performance is sharply tilting downward. We didn't have any swing trade opportunity in any of the broad market ETFs this week. However, we had very profitable gap long day trade opportunity in several of them. Let's look at SPY. From the daily chart, we can see that on Thursday, SPY opened with a gap down, significant gap down. However, the day ended with a very bullish shape candle. Therefore, we can imagine that there was probably a gap long day trade opportunity. Let's look at Q fine tune chart to see if indeed there was a low risk entry opportunity. This is SPY using fine tune chart 10 minute interval. This is Thursday's open, which was below Wednesday's low. There was a gap down open. Soon after that, the early range high and low levels were formed. As price was going above early range high, a gap long day trade entry could be taken. Putting stop just below recent low, that is early range low, that low was never touched. As price kept on going up, partial profit could be booked either at the red pivot line or the magenta pivot line and the remaining position could be held. It could be closed at Thursday's close or sometimes day traders may hold partial position as a two day trade. If one did that then Friday's up move will increase profit even more. All the ETFs are generally bullish except IWM. IWM used to be the strongest of the ETFs now it is the weakest. Though most of the ETFs are bullish, they are close to upper boundary lines. Therefore, there is no low risk entry opportunity in the ETFs right now. From the market study, we now move on to the sector study. This is four week sector performance of the 11 economic sectors. We studied these 11 sectors across three review periods. Red bar represents performance of this week. Green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks before the green bar. Together, 
they give us four weeks or about one month of performance. This week, nine of the 11 sectors went up, showing the market is bullish at the sector level. Telecom is the best performing sector. If you are following these market roundups, you could catch the exact turning around of this sector and take some very profitable long trades. KT Korea Telecom, we discussed this stock in the last market roundup. This week it went up again by 9.5%. You could capture much of that move taking a Q breakout long trade. Momentarily we will look at the Q charts for Korea Telecom. Information technology actually declined. In the last market roundup, I had cautioned against information technology sector. From the green bar, we can see that last week also Infotech was down. This week, Apple went up after earnings. It hit the $1 trillion benchmark. There was significant market coverage of this and probably it helped fuel the technology sector as a whole. Still, it was not enough to turn the information technology sector into positive. It remained negative for second week in a row. Therefore, though some very large infotech stocks went up, we continue to remain cautious on this sector. Telecom was lagging for a long time and then it started to go up. We could catch the turn around of this sector using QH heat map. And the same is true for consumer staples. Consumer staples was the weakest sector for a long time. And that was when we started to look for long opportunities. We can see consumer staples is one of the best performing sectors this week. Let's look at Q edge and study the sector performance there and then look at Korea Telecom to see how you could take a breakout trade in the stock this week. This is Q edge. From this graph we can see performance of Friday one day performance and compare that with the whole week's performance. Telecom went up on Friday and it is the biggest gainer for the week. Consumer staples went up on Friday and it is up for the week as well. Infotech down on Friday and down for the week. Utilities up for Friday and up for the week as well. Healthcare was down on Friday though it is up for the week. How to use this information? For information technology, the down moves show that we should be cautious. For telecom, the up moves show that we may continue to look for long opportunities. For healthcare, which is up for the week but down on Friday, we may see if it turns around and if it turns around, it may give a by the deep opportunity. Let's study the sector heat map and scorecard. QH analyzes the 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over recent days. Telecom is the best performing sector, we know that from the cyan color, followed by real estate and consumer staples. From the heat map, we can clearly see that consumer staples was 
very weak earlier magenta and now turning into strength the same was true for telecom earlier some time ago telecom was all magenta across the previous review periods since then telecom has gone up and we have more cyan colors across many review periods infotech is opposite to that it used to be strong earlier cyan color and now it is turning magenta materials is patchy it is shifting between cyan magenta cyan and this week magenta again the weakest sector in this week we may use this information to look for long opportunities in telecom and short opportunities in infotech let's look at the stock korea telecom using q charts in the last market roundup i had discussed that when it displayed a bullish headwind signal in the weekly chart tried to go up pulled back retested the same level and created a false downside breakout we could start to look for long opportunities from that time in the daily chart it displayed a bullish headwind on this yellow candle and i had explained in the last market round up that we could take a long trade right at the close of this yellow candle using the bullish headwind in daily and the false downside reversal in the weekly chart this week it broke above a memory resistance line that was here earlier on monday it broke above that our monday's candle shape was very bearish with long upper tail we cannot say monday was bearish because it had a big gap up we have to conclude that monday's move was mixed big gap up but ended with a candle with upper tail because it broke above the memory resistance we could start to look for long opportunity but not on monday we could use tuesday's price move to take a long trade using fine tune chart we could probably take the long somewhere in the middle of the candle put stop just below tuesday's low and as price hit the upper boundary line on wednesday we could book partial profit the sector is the strongest sector weekly candle is very bullish and korea telecom as we studied in last market round up it was optimal valuation stock therefore we would not like to book full profit we would continue to hold partial position trying to let profit run in this manner using q charts and q vital statistics and the industry strength we could catch the stock right at the very bottom or again after the gap up move both of those entries gave significant profits from sector study we now move on to industry study we are looking at the 10 best performing industries of this week we are looking at their 5 days and 10 days scores we can see for several of them like tires and rubber the scores are at about the same level showing that they are continuing their strength from the previous week the same is true for wireless telecom for electronic equipment and instruments etc last week we saw that all the three telecom industries were in the most accelerating list q acceleration often predicts future possible industry moves this week two of those telecom industries wireless telecom services and alternative carriers ended up in the best performing list so q acceleration proved its value once again 
in alternative careers industry ORBC went up by 8.4 percentage after earnings raiser. Almost miraculously, Q bullish headwind foretold the possible move up. Q headwind once again proved to be probably the most reliable stock reversal signal. We will look at ORBC's chart shortly. Let's look into paper products. This industry is also one of the best performing industries and this stock RFP. It has optimal valuation. It went up by 20% this week. You could take the long trade based on weekly and daily memory support reversal on Wednesday 1st of August. This also gave us a very profitable trade. Let's study these best performing industries from Q Edge and then drill down into ORBC and RFP. In Q Edge, the best performing industries are displayed with cyan color over 5 days period. Alternative carriers and paper products both are very strong in this week. Let's drill down into alternative carriers. ORBC, this stock went up by 8.4% this week. That move was associated with earnings. Let's look at the technical chart. On Thursday, as a result of earnings, ORBC sharply went up. Just prior to that, this week itself, it displayed a bullish headwind signal. Looking at that, at minimum, Q traders will avoid taking any short trade. As earnings was nearby, one could probably take very low risk, short put vertical trade that ended up with very large profit. We see that Thursday there was a big price move. Let's see if one could catch that using fine tune 5 minute or 10 minute chart. This is ORBC using 10 minute fine tune chart. On Thursday, price opened at this level, the blue color level, that was slightly above previous day's close, which was the magenta pivot level. After market open, the early range high and the early range low lines form as price was going above early range high. A long could be taken at that point, putting stop just below. Early range low, however, in this case we had a magenta color pivot nearby, so one could put stop just below magenta pivot level. As price went up, more than risk distance was covered and day traders could book profit. This was associated with earnings, so one could take a trade using short put vertical. On this day, the earnings was already out, so one could take the long using stock or using simple call option as well. Paper products is very strong. Let's drill down into paper products. RFP. This stock is optimally valued. The valuation primary column is in cyan color. And it had excellent growth in last three quarters. Very high growth. It went up by 20% this week. Let's look at the Q charts to see if we can benefit from that price move using Q charts. RFP already had memory support lines in the weekly as well as daily charts. We have discussed this entry technique many times earlier. If price tries to go below memory support, in a longer term interval, weekly interval in this case, but fails and reverses. We could try to take a trade entry, long entry, right at the point of reversal. Using daily chart, that reversal point came at this time. We could take a long on close of this day, Wednesday, putting stop just below recent low. 
and on Thursday it should up a lot. We could book partial profit at that time. The industry is strong, the stock is optimally valued, and the candles are very strong as well. Therefore, in this case, we would not like to book full profit. We would book partial profit at upper boundary with discipline and we would like to hold remaining position trying to let profit run. This is a graph of accelerating industries from previous week. You can see that all the three telecom industries were accelerating one week ago, wireless telecom services, alternative carriers and integrated telecom services. And we just now saw two of them, wireless telecom and alternative carriers, became best performers in this week. From best performing industries, let's now move to worst performing industries. Home improvement retail was one of the most decelerating industries one week ago and this week it is the very worst performing industry. Just like in case of telecom, accelerating industries became best performing industries. In case of home improvement, decelerating industry became worst performing industry. In home improvement retail, we have these two stocks LL and FND. They drop by huge 18 and 21 percentage respectively. Both had given very clear trend following go with flow that is Q trade setup, short setup earlier. And while these signals came on Q charts, the stocks were also declining from memory resistance lines. We could easily take those trades and they ended up being hugely profitable. These were again Q360 degree trades where industry fundamental and technical forces were aligned with the short trades. The industry was already weak. Both of these stocks are overvalued. And technically, they had very clear go with flow short trade setup. Let's look at the worst performing industries on QH, locate home improvement retail, then drill down into LLFND, look at their fundamentals and then their technicals. In QH, the worst performing industries show up with magenta color score over 5 days period. Home Improvement Retail has the worst score. It is the worst performing industry of the week. Let's drill down. Both LL and FND are overvalued. We see that from magenta color overvaluation primary column. FND went down by 21% and LL went down by 18% this week. Let's look at their technical charts. LL, Lumber Liquidators. It already had memory resistance lines in the weekly as well as in the daily chart. Daily had displayed bearish headwind earlier from where price fell down. Then it tried to recover and declined again from the memory resistance level. Displayed a series of magenta color candles. We could take go with flow short trade at any of them and then price fell sharply giving us huge profit in all of those entries. FND this stock was also weak in the weekly chart. In the daily chart we had a memory resistance line. On this magenta candle price went down from the memory resistance level and that was a clear signal for a go with flow short entry. The short could be taken right at the close of the day. As price came to the white direction line, partial profit could be booked and at earnings it fell even more. As earnings was nearby, the short could be taken probably not using stocks but using short call vertical. This trade ended up 
being very profitable as well. These are the most accelerating industries for the current week. We are looking at the industries 5 days and 10 days scores. You can see for all these industries 5 days scores are much higher than their 10 day scores. This is showing that these industries are accelerating. In research and consulting services, NCI went up by 9.8% in this week which was the earnings week. You could probably take a bullish trade based on the Q headwind signal that came in daily chart on 18th July and at the same time it was reversing from weekly memory support line. We saw this technique in action just a while ago as well. If price is reversing from memory support in longer time interval, weekly chart in this case, then we can look for entry opportunity on the lower time frame, that is the daily chart. Using that technique, we could take a very low risk entry in NCI and profit handsomely from there. Let's look at the accelerating industries in QEdge. Locate research and consulting services and then look at NCI. In QEdge, the accelerating industries are displayed with cyan color over base column. Research and consulting services is one of the accelerating industries. The score is not fully cyan yet over 5 days. That is how the accelerating industries give us entry opportunities before the industries end up being very strong. It is as if in a car race some cars are behind but they are starting to accelerate. We can start to bet on those cars before they have gone in the front. Research and consulting services is such an industry this week. Let's drill down. NCI is a stock in this industry that is optimally valued and it has earnings growth, increasing earnings growth in the recent quarters. Let's look at NCI technical charts. NCI already had the memory support in the weekly chart. Price tried to go below that multiple times for 3 weeks but each time reversed from there. In the daily chart, we had a bullish headwind signal at this point. That is the same time where price tried to go below this level. What is this level? This is the level of the weekly memory support line. But closed above that with a bullish headwind signal. Using our technique of reversal from memory support line, we could take a long right at the close of this bar putting stop just below recent low. Price went up sharply subsequently giving us huge profit. NCI also had earnings. This is earnings season. Many stocks are having earnings. Looking at the earnings proximity, one could take the trade. Probably not with stock but with short put vertical. That ended up being a very profitable trade again. Decelerating industries, they tend to be poor performers in subsequent weeks. Airlines is an industry that is special. It decelerated over 5 days. However, it accelerated on Thursday and Friday. Because it started to accelerate on Thursday and Friday and a few weeks ago it was very strong. You may now look for a low risk trend following buy opportunity. In this stock, GOL, GOL has short squeeze potential as well and it is an optimally valued stock. This is how we just don't look at the decelerating industries for the week and blindly start shorting them. When we look carefully, we see that though over 5 days airlines decelerated, it started accelerating on Thursday, Friday, 
we have to take trades at the right edge and at the right edge the industry is now getting stronger so we will look for a stock that is fundamentally strong and technically strong as well gol seems to be such a stock let's look at the decelerating industries in q edge look at airlines and then drill down into gol look at its fundamentals and then technicals in q edge the decelerating industries are displayed with magenta color over base column airlines decelerated this week the base column is dark magenta however if we open the more recent days we can see over two days period it gained strength heavily over one day that is on friday also it is much more cyan than the five days column if we look at the score columns we can see over five days the score is 40 magenta color but over two days and one day periods the scores have improved a lot from 40 to 132 to even higher 148 and now the scores are in cyan color that is why now probably we will start to look for long opportunities in airlines not short opportunities let's drill down GOL is a stock that is optimally valued. The short squeeze column is showing that it has a short squeeze potential as well. We can see from the performance over 5 days, 2 days and 1 day periods that over 5 day, over the week it is down but over Thursday and Friday it is up significantly. Let's look at GOL using technical charts. GOL using at a glance template in the weekly chart we have very bullish shape candle and bullish color candle as well this was earnings week the long lower tail shows that initially price tried to go down but it recovered very well closed slightly below last week's close that is also shown by the red color in the activity bar In the daily chart, interestingly, this bullish headwind signal captured the very low. Then it went up from there. We could take a long trade on this candle as well as a go with flow long setup. At the right end, it went up, pulled back a little bit and on Friday went up again. This has given us a low risk go with flow long trade setup. Entry could be taken on Friday's close, putting stop just below recent low. As price is already above upper boundary lines, we cannot use upper boundary lines as a target in this case. We could switch to another Q template like the longer term pivot template to decide our profit target. Or we could always book partial profit once the risk distance is covered. I change to the template that displays the longer term pivot levels. If we use this template, we can decide our next price target either at this yellow pivot level or this yellow pivot level. Usually we like to use the upper boundary lines for trend following go with flow long setup however in this case price is already above upper boundary lines that's why we have to use other techniques to decide price targets and these longer term pivot levels help us with that those were the general topics let me go through some additional stocks in our miscellaneous discussion let's compare Apple, Facebook and Baidu using Q360 degrees analysis to check that if we were thinking of taking a long trade, where will we take it? 
before I do the analysis, where do you think you would like to take the long trade? You may type your answer on the Q&A panel. I am in several traders groups and some of the people were favoring Apple, some were favoring Facebook. Nobody mentioned Baidu. Let's look at the actual data. I am using QVital where we can analyze any stock from all the major countries of the world to do their fundamental and peer analysis. I have entered these three stocks, Apple, Facebook and Baidu. Let's look at their vital statistics. In terms of valuation, both Facebook and Baidu are optimally valued. We don't have to look very carefully on the scores. Both are in cyan color. Therefore, both are optimally valued. Whereas Apple is in yellow color. It is not optimally valued at this point. If we look at last three years EPS growth, then we don't see Apple as the best of these three stocks. Baidu is very strong and Facebook is also strong. Baidu has significant acceleration growth from three years ago to two years to this current year. And for Facebook, the earnings growth is holding steady over these three years periods. If we look at the short squeeze column, we can see that both Facebook and Baidu has short squeeze potential. Apple doesn't have it. So if we are looking for a swing long trade, combining the valuation, yearly earnings growth and short squeeze potential, we will probably like to take the trade in Facebook or Baidu, not in Apple. I am not looking at the earnings quality column because we are now talking about swing trades. If we were looking for longer term investments, then Baidu would probably not be the best choice because it doesn't have as solid earnings quality as Facebook and Apple. However, for swing trading, we don't need to focus so much on earnings quality. We can look at the other factors and going by that, Facebook and Baidu are better for taking swing long trades. Let's look at the technical charts of Facebook and Baidu. Facebook and Baidu side by side using Q hop on chart. Facebook had a very sharp drop associated with earnings. Stabilize somewhat and trying to go up. On Friday, it closed just below the white direction line. There is no apparent support looking to the left side. Baidu was moving sideways, you can say, down, up, down, up, and down again. The latest down move was associated with earnings. It had memory support in the daily chart. After sharp drop associated with earnings, very next day price reversed from the memory support line. The up day was with heavy activity. Just before that, the down day was with very heavy activity as well. Therefore, on this red candle that bounced up from memory support line, we had a Q bounce long trade setup. The long could be taken at that point itself. Looking at the technical charts, we had a Q trade setup in Baidu, but not in Facebook, not yet. Therefore, when you combine fundamentals and technicals, we have to conclude objectively that the best swing long opportunity was and probably still is in Baidu, not in Facebook and not in Apple. Let us look at Apple's chart as well. This is Apple using at a glance template. This week we have a very bullish shape candle and bullish color candle as well. On Wednesday after earnings it shoot up, opened with a big gap up and Thursday and Friday it continued to move up. 
it is certainly very strong in the charts however it is at a very high price level and the stop for swing trading will be far away that is one reason q traders would not like to take a long in apple for swing trading right now we discussed apple facebook and baidu compared them and also saw that baidu actually gave a bounce long trade setup on thursday if somebody took the long trade at thursday's close using call options near the money call options then by friday that option went up by 86% during the day partial profit could easily be booked on enough lots to make the entire trade risk free from that time onward so we could book partial profit take our money back and the remaining call options could be held trying to let profit run that is a technique that q traders often use when catching the extreme low of a stock as was in case of bite bsbr this stock came in q scorecard on friday let's look at the q scorecard and identify this stock it came on the dashboard q scorecard dashboard displays best and worst performing stocks in different categories bsbr came as a stock on friday in the category of best performing growth stocks it went up on friday by 5.4 percent let's do a peer analysis we can do that by clicking the magnifying glass bsbr medium valuation shown by yellow color and very strong growth the yearly growths are all green bright green and it is improving has good earnings quality and a short squeeze potential as well pays a dividend of 3.7 percent let's look at bsbr using technical charts we had discussed bsbr in earlier market roundups it displayed bullish headwind both in weekly and daily those could capture the very low we had discussed it in market roundups at that time much before it came to others notice we could take a long trade looking back now it looks like an easy trade but at that time when we could take the long trade either using this bullish headwind in daily or on this cyan color candle it was not looking so bullish that is how using q charts and q fundamentals we can catch a stock much before others and make much bigger profit at the right edge on friday we again have a cyan color candle weekly is very bullish as well price is above upper boundary but that is okay because in this case price was in sharp downtrend and then it went up from there when a stock is reversing from downtrend to uptrend it is expected that we will have a go with flow long trade when price is above upper boundary lines upper boundary lines will take a bit of time to catch up to recognize the change in trend using that understanding it is probably okay to look for a long trade based on friday sand color can this was not the only stock banking stock where we could use 360 degrees analysis to take the long much ahead of others there were other banking stocks south american banking stocks that we discussed earlier in the market rounders those also ended up being very profitable we carried out top down analysis from sector to industry to stocks fundamentals and technical analysis we looked at stocks using dashboard let's look at some stocks using bottom up analysis these are atnt ticker symbol t caterpillar cat and the stock jef on q sonar all of them are showing one or another kind of bullish signal 
the same is true for this ETF FAS as well financial CTM Caterpillar has a possible bounce trade setup we can recognize that instantly from the green cell under bounce column FAS has a possible go with flow that is trend following long trade setup the GWF go with flow column is lit up with sand color same is true for JEF FAS is the financial CTF and JEF is a financial stock both are bullish and AT&T we just saw that telecom is very strong sector we had many profitable trades in telecom sector AT&T broke out of memory line let's look at the technical charts to see if we have good trade opportunities here Caterpillar in the weekly chart this was earnings week price drop but if we look at the weekly candles we can see the lows of the candles are actually slightly going up and when we turn to the daily chart we see that the memory support was already there on Thursday price tried to go below that but recovered close above that using the technique that I described earlier we could take a long right at the point it went back above the memory support line on Friday it again tried to go down but closed up with a bullish shape candle one could take a long trade right at the point price was reversing from memory support line looking at the daily chart it seems that likely next move for caterpillar will be upward you may look for a long trade next week somebody could probably take the long on Thursday and Friday itself if you haven't taken it you may keep an eye on the stock next week FAS weekly is cyan bullish color weekly shape is bullish daily hit the upper boundary line pulled back to value area then went up on Friday giving us a cyan color candle this is meeting all the requirements of go with flow long trade setup so FAS the financial bull 3x ETF has given a long trade setup on Friday JEF Jeffries Financial Group financial sector stock just like FAS it has also given us a go with flow trend following long setup on Friday weekly is cyan bullish shape candle daily was in downtrend earlier then moving sideways broke out during earnings pulled back went up again on Friday giving us a cyan color candle Therefore, it gave us a go with flow trend following trade setup. AT&T, it was in downtrend. This week, it has displayed a bullish headwind signal. There are few memory resistance lines nearby, both in the weekly chart as well as in the daily chart. Therefore, we may not take a long on Friday. However, keep an eye. If these memory resistance lines are broken, it may give us a long opportunity. How are the fundamentals of these three stocks? AT&T, JEF and Caterpillar. Let's look at them using QVITON. They are in different industries. However, we can put them together in QVITON. We can click the calculator button. It is calculating the vital statistics. Calculation is done. AT&T and Caterpillar both are optimally valued. And looking at the recent quarter earnings growth, we can see Caterpillar has very nice growth, bright green color. And AT&T has good growth, green color and steady. So fundamentally, AT&T, Caterpillar, both are strong in terms of valuation as well as in terms of growth. AT&T gives a very nice dividend of 6.2 percentage. 
caterpillar also gives a decent dividend 2.4 percent jef is medium in terms of valuation but look at recent quarter earnings growth we can see next earnings for jef is in october so the earnings has already passed and that earnings was very good more than thousand percentage growth in the recent quarter so fundamentally for these three stocks we have enough reasons to look for long trades and technically all of them either have given like in case of jef at cat q trade setup and for AT&T, it may give a long opportunity if it breaks above the memory support lines. Let me summarize today's session. When we look at market breadth, we see that though the indices went up, the internals are not all bullish. For NYC, it is bullish, but for NASDAQ, it is bearish. There is divergence in new high-low and advanced decline up-down volume both are below zero that is giving rise to some caution when we look at the market etfs we see in terms of price move they are mostly bullish except iwm which may actually give a go with flow short trade setup next week if it starts to go down the other three broad etfs are at a high price level not giving us low risk long entry opportunities sectors are bullish nine sectors went up so market and sector levels both are bullish there is no bearish sign yet other than weakness in some internals however market and sector levels are too broad when we drill down into industry level looking at q edge industry scorecard the industry strength and also its acceleration deceleration we can always look for both long as well as short opportunities q acceleration often shows which industries are going to go up next we could use that to take very profitable trades in telecom sector we could also take short trades in industries that were decelerating we could identify several trades from this top down approach and we could also look for trades using bottom up approach using sonar we identified several trades based on friday's close like jef fas and caterpillar cat in this manner using top down or bottom up analysis using q edge q vital and q charts we can always identify profitable high probability trade opportunities in all market conditions that is all that i plan to share in today's session thank you for attending i look forward to seeing you in our next session have a great weekend and trade profitably <music>